Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome not just to the canyon, no, not today. Welcome aboard the crazy train. <laughs> where we do what we can because we must for science and for no other reason. It has been established here, and I, I doubt that we could find many voices of dissent. I'm gonna grab this boy here. That thing right there. The Reedy Crawler 16 turn 540 is among a very small field of comparison, and that being Reedy RTR crawler motors, the least worst. The 550 14 turn is significantly worse. Like it's, it's so bad, it's almost kind of amazing how bad it is. So we did a, uh, we did the Reedy files. We did a series of tests in which we came to the conclusion that the 16 turn five slot 540 is the least worst of the Reedy sealed cans. This ignores the radi the things like the Reedy radons because those are just surpass motors with different stickers on them. They do have the Reedy markup. They cost like fifteen. They cost fifty dollars instead of fifteen dollars. That is neither here nor there. This is Tomax. He is the brother uh, sitting above uh, atop the red vehicle. And then he is fitted with a Reedy Crawler 540 and an SC500X, Ooh. the aftermarket Reedy motor, which is about 7 or 8% better than an SC480X, which prior to testing the SC400X, there might be an X on there, prior to testing the SC400 was what I consider to be the worst speed control that someone can force upon you, right? Not the worst speed control you can buy. You can buy worse things. But nobody sets out to buy an SC400 or a 480 or a 500. They're just given to you. So at the close of the, the, of the Reedy files, and this is the proper close of the Reedy files. I had threatened it before. And how much further the Reedy files will go today, I don't know. We have too many things setting upon the bench next to us. This is Zaymont, the Blue Brother. These two vehicles, for those unfamiliar, if you're stumbling into this one, you have, you have stumbled in. Like, just look around, try to try to take it all in. Uh, these two vehicles are identical in every way, in every possible way, save for one thing. Reedy SC500X, Hobbywing 1080 Generation 1. Can a Gen 1 make this motor... Will I be able to tell the difference? Is the motor so bad that it doesn't even matter? It doesn't matter. Will that not be able to put any drag brake in it? I don't know. I don't know. What else do we have? Oh, uh, you're going to regret asking that question. Here atop the bag. Hobbywing 1080 G2. Enjora as of yet unnamed 140 amp brushed speed control. It has no programmable parameters other than than uh, BEC voltage currently. When this is finally released, it will have a program card and the whole deal. In initial testing, it has proven to be really honestly quite good, very good, and is supposed to have a release price of $29.99, which means maybe brushed isn't completely dead, Maybe it's a little zombie. Maybe we can keep it alive. Because the whole purposes of what's going on in this first series of tests executed by the brothers here is... It's always odd. He's mad dogging his brother all the time. Uh, is... Is brushed even an option? Like, is it worthy of being considered? Because... The Fusion SE exists. 1200 Fusion SE, 70 bucks. 1800 Fusion SE, 80 bucks. Can you do better for less money? If you get to 70, if you get to 80 bucks, nothing competes with the SE at that price point. You you could might say, oh well, I can go to AliExpress. I can get a very cheap Outrunner controller and a cheap Outrunner. Yeah, it'll work. 
it will lack the versatility and the ease of an installation and the you never have to worry about driving through the crick. Uh, the Fusion SE just has too much going for it. So much going for it that, like, is it even worth buying a G2? Like, it, it it's worth it to me. Why is it worth it to me? Well, this isn't even the bucket. In my hands, these are all 35-turn motors, effectively. This is a 16-turn 5-slot. These are 16 turn five slots, which they, their three slot equivalent is basically a 35 turn. Enjora 35, Tekken 35, yeah, Racing Hack Moto 35, uh, another Enjora 35, a hand wound team brewed Devastator, Annihilator, Inebriator, uh, Oscillator, See you later, Gator. Uh, it's something in an Aider 35 turn, and then Tamiya. CR tuned, I assume the CR is for crawler, 35 turn. We, I believe we've tested this one in the past and I was kind of surprised by it. These are all 35 turns. These are just the 35 turns. So I have an extensive, I literally have a bucket of 540 motors of all turn counts from, what's the lowest turn count I've got? Probably something in the 14, 15 turn range, all the way up to 85 turns. And I was that close one day to buying a 100 turn. I can't, I can't quit you. I can't give up on brushed motors. We have a couple brushed motors in the fleet. And you know what? Sometimes it's kind of nice. But my favorite combo is this and this. Surpass Rack 540 Plus, 1080 G2. That is effectively after tax shipping licensing and all associated event fees a hundred dollars and i will acknowledge you can get something as good or better for that money you can get a rhino v80 with an outrunner for around the cost of this so i can't justify this this is 100 percent want zero percent need usually we try to get something in the middle so the goal is to find that 50 to 60 dollar combo that that price might be offset because you might already have one of the speed controls laying around. So what are we doing? We're doing motor and ESC roulette until something lines up other than this that is good. What is the dream? Well, obviously the dream is this and this to actually be competent. The double Injora, the twin Injora duo that is a $14 motor and a $30 speed control. That's 43 bucks. You're not going to get cheaper than that. Much cheaper. You can get a sealed can, but we're not. You will notice, aside from these reedy abominations, we don't futz with the sealed cans. There's no point. Life is too short. So one of these combos is going to have to do something exceptional. It can't just be, oh, that's pretty okay. It has to be either very good and very cheap, or very, very, very good and sort of cheap. And we've yet to find it. So, we begin, the crazy train pulls away from crazy station to head to the rocks to close a loop. We're going to put at least, well, we might as well, we might as well. There's four speed controls here. Three of them are reasonable. The SC500 is here to close a loop within a loop. We are collapsing a Venn diagram in upon itself. We're making a singularity out of it. Can we make that motor, can any speed control make that motor not just outright awful? Like, the SC500 almost gives it drag break. Almost. And what is the... The SC500 came in a box. Uh, what, what are we rated at? 80 amps continuous, 320 burst. Do we question those numbers? Yes. Yes. But the due diligence is due. We are going to run. And I would be remiss if I did not mention before we head outside. Identical radios. Identical bodies. Identical everything. They they are the same. Uh, I don't run bullets. 
I don't, I don't do this. I don't do this, nor do I do this. So, because we are hot swapping down to Velcro on these, uh, I can change a receiver in a matter of moments, and I've gotten it down to where I can change a motor in about five minutes. These OD3s are not conducive to rapid motor changes, but they are exceptionally low center of gravity. I mean, the driver, nothing is as high as the driver's uh, took us. Everything is below that. The OD3 is a very small, very compact gearbox. So we bring out a sack of things so that we may hot swap to our heart's content. And you know what? We're going to let the jazz band play by feel. And we're going to stop when we feel like stopping. I don't know. Uh, because science, science is just effing around and writing it down. And we are writing it down visually directly into your eyeballs through this visually recorded medium and or podcast format. However you listen, if you're just listening to me in the background, hey, shout outs. Uh, yeah, this is what we're going to start with. We will probably put all four speed controls across the... Reedies, and then we are going to switch to identical in every way in Jora 35 turn tuned machines, identical, and then we will get to see the differences, if any at all are present, between the respective speed controls. How long the SC500X will remain in this conversation, I don't know. We, the 1080 G1 is in the conversation, no longer produced by Hobbywing, but my goodness, the 1080 G1 is the, I don't know, what is something extreme, it's the two-slot toaster of brushed speed controls. Everybody's got one somewhere, even if they're not using it. So if a motor leaps out at us, what if it's an old Tamiya 35 turn? What if it's a hack moto? What if it's something, if you pair that to the G1 that you probably already have, you can put another rig together. And if all we need to put another rig together is a power plant, then let's make more crawlers, man. Because more is usually generally better, unless it's like, I don't know, I guess spiders. I guess more is not necessarily better with spiders, depending on what you're doing on that particular day. No judgments. So they will sit as they sit. I'm going to fill a box, bag, or bin with all of these goodies, the tools required to swap motors so we can just do it all al fresco out in the piazza. And we're going to find out. We're going to do the pseudoiest of sciences today, where we try to find something 35 turn brushed that isn't just not worth it. Why 35 turn? 35 turn is like your general. It's your general all-purpose uh, whether your final drive ratio is 40 to 1 or 80 to 1, you can get away with a 35 turn. And most of these motors, like take this one for instance, to my knowledge is available in 35, 45, 55, on and on and on and on and on. Most every one of these motors, if they have a 35 turn version, they also have a 45 and a 55 and an on and on and on and on. So if you don't have a lot of gear reduction, you can get a 55. It'll still be $14, $15, $19. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. I've done this before. I have tried to make cheap motors work, but there was always this time in between, right? It wasn't this one with this and this one with this, and we drive one, and a mere second later, we drive the other one because the brain fills in gaps. So our goal with all of this shenaniganery is to remove those gaps. We've eliminated variables, and now we're trying to remove gaps. This is not cake, but science. Join me, would you? I have walked an almost inconceivable number of times. Bat forgot this, forgot that, forgot this, forgot that. I should have built one of the two things closer to the other of the two things. Tomax, the red boy, is currently fitted with the SC500, which my brain willingly and willfully forgets that this radio is set up, that this speed control is FBR, is forward brake reverse. It's not just straightforward reverse. It is annoying 
but I can't fault it too much because I did zero points of due diligence looking to find out whether or not you can change it to Ford Reverse. The program card doesn't have that option, so neat, question marks. Uh, so the SC500X with the Reedy 16 turn 540, it is certainly the smoothest feeling of the Reedy's, but it's still not like, it's the, it's also the most drag brake of the Reedy's, but I want to say retail cost on these is like 35 to $37. You're talking $5 away from a 1080 G2 and you can still on Red Cat shop get a 1080 G1 with a program card and a Holmes uh, sealed 550 crawl master for $40. So the Reedy is basically by its own nature priced out of contention already. It is reasonably smooth. It's, it's, the throttle, the trigger feel on it is certainly better than anything else from Reedy. And as soon as I say that, we roll in with the same motor, but a Gen 1 1080. It's just better. It's, it's just better. It's not even comparable how much better the 1080 is than the SC500. And prior to just a few weeks ago, I didn't know the SC500 existed. And prior to but just a few days ago, I didn't know what the, the SC500X drove like, much less having, having driven it immediately back to back right up against a 1080 G1. This is not close. Drag brake, very nearly the same, very nearly the same, but oh, uh, it feels like a different motor. There's so much more capability and capacity in a 1080. So when I said skeptical about the SC500 claiming 80 amps, the 80 in 1080 is also supposed to be 80 amps. When we know that most motors, most of these brushed motors wide open are drawing nothing, nothing. The servo is generally drawing more than the motor in the case of these brushed motors. It's not it is comparable, but it's almost not directly comparable. The SC500 felt smooth relative to an SC400 or an SC480, but like just the amount of wheel speed and the amount of noise. Oh, what is it about brothers? This is just like, this is what they do. This is what they do all the time. Oh yeah, it's the 1080 on that same garbage can motor is, it feels like an outrunner by comparison. The SC5, it, it, it's all, it, this is, what we're doing is we're growing that sample size. We're building the pool because w w was I too harsh on the 16 turn 540s? That is almost an acceptable amount of drag brake. Very nearly. With 69 to one gear reduction though, these should just hold like an electronic anchor, regardless of the motor or the speed control. All that we've learned now in these first couple minutes is that the SC500 is, is not an option. It's not. Uh, it probably wasn't a crawler speed control initially, and they were just like, oh, look, crawler thing. And we can't uh, call out Reedy exclusively for that. Castle does the same thing. They've never made a crawler product as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, the 1080 is still, it is the benchmark. It, it is against which all other things should be compared. So as that guy is doing a, a just fine 1080, let us see 1080 G2 Head-to-head, -head, same crappy motor versus 1080 G1. All right, let's roll this guy in. So blue is Gen 1.
I don't want the best line. I want the one that requires all the throttle control to go through it. So I want, I want, I want more of a, a mess about line. 1080 G2. It's just, it's just refined. It's just that little bit better. The 1080 compared to the SC500, a vast gulf exists between the two. Between the 1080 G2 and the 1080 G1, it is like they tweaked the software. I know the case is a tiny bit different, but I don't think the actual, the heart of it. They changed the brain, but they didn't change the heart. It is very similar in feel, I, but I feel like there's a little bit more immediacy. The power comes on as smoothly. I'm trying to figure out how to describe this. But you feel like you there's like there's more FOC in it. It will it will do more on the same level of throttle input. Like I don't I don't need to use a lot of I gotta drive the G1 more. The G2 is a little more automatic in its forward movements. Like I'm keeping it well, we can we can do it even better. We're we're doing this all wrong. Okay, let me let me set this on the flat. Let me look at cruise control. Let's go to like, no, a little higher than that. A little lower than that. Let's try 25. Okay. How FOC is the FOC? We've set cruise control to 25% on the G2. Oh, it's, yeah. So I'm not controlling the throttle. This is all on cruise control. So this is true steady state stuff. We're just maneuvering via steering. There's not a lot to not like there. Okay. Let's do the same thing. Plus 25. If you want to uh, determine how something is really doing, remove even more variables. Yeah, felt exactly the same. Felt exact, egg, exactly the same. I, I felt no difference at all. The, the blue guy felt like he was scooting up a little faster, almost inexplicably, but in terms of the feel of the of, of forward progress, the, the 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 rig moving forward. If you didn't tell me what speed control was in what rig. I, I would have no way of knowing. I've already kind of forgotten. Red in the G, G2 in the red. And honestly, here's, here's, a, here's a real problem that's rearing its ugly head. That is, I've spent so much time now tooling around in with Reedy 540 16 turns, they've started to kind of feel okay. You know what? It's, it's, a, it's a step above just acceptable. It's almost kind of okay, but I think that that is uh, slow acting poison. I think, I think that's what that is, which is I'm forgetting what other motors feel like. Each speed control is getting incrementally better. Let's pull the 1080 G1 and replace it with the Enjora and go side by side and see if I feel a difference at all there. And we'll do the cruise control thing again because the cruise control is the real telling factor. It, it takes away it literally, it literally takes away this. Like I get, if I don't have that feeling of trigger pressure, uh, it really 
shines a brighter light on two speed controls that are very similar doing the exact same thing. We did the first twin thing, which is uh, this gentleman was parked up on the top of the hill and uh, when I went to test motor direction on the blue one after I'd plugged in the speed control, and we'll get to why I had to test motor direction in a second, uh, I grabbed the radio for red and uh, launched him right off the top of Slick Rock there. Yeah, that G2. Power-wise, so it's definitely not power. It's not a power differential, it's a smoothness thing. Because when we allow the cruise control to take it out of our hands, the, the G2 feels ex identical to the G1 in every way. So the heart is the same, the brain is different. They've, they've done something to the software. This is the Enjora. It's so close to the G2 that we have to. So we're still, we still have cruise set at 25%. And so 25% on this has got definitely more sauce. So I know they claim 140 amps. Okay, so let's see. So let's drop cruise down to 20? 20. That looks a little closer. So what it feels is there's a there's a differential inarguably I would I would go so far as to say I feel like there's a differential in smoothness but there is more there is detectably more power it feels like the 1080s are using yeah 20 on the Enjora and 25 on the G2 are very close together there's just more power coming out of that Injora. It doesn't quite have that, well, I think I, fidelity, or I think a more accurate term might be granularity. Uh, different throttle inputs feel more different on the G2 than they do on the Injora. Um, th there's, there's just, you can feel more power coming out of the Injora. Let's see, I want to see drag brake again. Now we're just, we're just holding. So the G2 will pretty much hold a, eh. We're asking a lot of the Reedy. Those, those Reedy crawlers are, the, the dark colored, the dark gray colored semicircles inside the cans barely qualify as magnets. Um, the, I, I want to be, I want to make sure that I'm especially clear. Yeah, see, the drag brake is better on the G2. It, it, that has to be FOC because FOC is, is basically looking at wheel speed. So when you're not moving, FOC is doing what it can to keep wheel speed at zero. If your wheel speed is 12 RPM, FOC is making ever, all, all these computations to keep your wheel speed at 12 RPM. So I, the question we're looking at here is, is the Enjora doing things as well as the G2? The G2, I, I can't even say certainly. I will just go so far as to say, feels more refined. There's an, there's an enhanced level of smoothness to it. And again, we're talking about trash cans. This is worst case scenario in motors. And I'm, when I say that, I mean it. I have not in my time tested a brushed motor that is worse than the Reedy sealed can RTR offerings. This is, so these speed controls are doing all of the work. But what is not deniable is that yeah, okay, let's look at that speed right there. I'm just letting him go now. Like, I'm not even... That's just self-crawling. <laughs> self-crawling, so... So it, it's doing the thing. 
can the G, can the G2 self crawl? Can it do the thing? So yeah, this is at 25 instead of 20, and we'll go right there. And we're just see it. It can't quite. It can't quite muscle up. Oh, you did! Oh, did you hear the little bog? Yeah. The Enjora is more powerful, and it should be. They they claim 140, and Hobby Wing. Is this going to be a brother helping a brother out? Nah, I just decided to run him over. And now, yeah, well, they live together, they die together. Uh, it's more powerful. The G2 is smoother, but I will take more power over smoothness, which is why, cost aside, I prefer a Fusion SE to a Fusion Pro. The Fusion Pro is so smooth, so, 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 so smooth. It might be the smoothest motor ESC combo you can, you can buy. It may well be but it's $150. That price always rears its head. So now I gotta take a minute. I gotta take some time. We are gonna put two identical Injora 35 tuner motors in there. I think I'm just gonna leave it like it is. G2 versus Injora 140. We'll just call it the Injora 140 and uh, see, see what it does on what I would call real motors. Not crazy but real. All right, the twin swap, twin swap was about 25 minutes to pull out the two Reedies. They sound alarmingly similar. And I, th I could have sworn I would have put a very small amount of money on uh, getting the pinion mesh on red a little better, but they sound exactly the same. So there you go. What's up, Lizard? There is, I mean, the low, the low low now, I don't think it would be unfair to say twice as low. Oh, what's up guy? Like we can go proper low. I'm using 17% throttle right there. That, that feels properly decent. And also, so a 16 turn five slot, 540, which is what came out, the, the sealed can reedies, should be something approximating a 35 turn 540 in a three slot. This is much slower. This is so much slower. Like let's, let's swing, let, no, let's park him right there. And try. I, I've already forgotten what speed control is and who. This has got to be the G2. No, this is the Enjora. This feels to me, this feels to me a little bit smoother. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Again. Smoother in terms of power delivery, in terms of how low can you go and get wheel movement, the, that goes to the 10, that goes to the G2 by, by a, okay, by a lot. This, you can give it near zero throttle input and, and get movement out of it. This is super low control. Once you get like, yeah, let me see full speed here. Yeah, it is appreciably slower than the 540 Reedies. Yeah, there's just a real low, low. Hobby Wing, they, they hold the crown for that real low, low, FOC, low end control. There's, it's just not as, it's not smoothness. It's just, 
I don't I don't know what to compare it to. The low control again fidelity or granularity, like each little increment of throttle input is perceptible. With this, there's this feeling of we have more power. And it just puts on power. Oh, I got it. I got it. The Enjora on this 35 turn feels more akin to a Fusion SE in terms of the way the power rolls on. And the G2 on here feels more like an, a pro. Because, I mean, I just simply can't get that low of a throttle input on the other one. They do the thing very similarly. Well, okay, we're gonna we're gonna have to reestablish a baseline here. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, look at 25 on this compared to what 25 was like on the Reedy. We're, this is no hander. I'm gonna have to give it a little. You got you got buried in a little bit. just a smoother it's so much smoother on the delivery let's see oh brother stuff it's just brother stuff okay so we're gonna leave this guy at 20 and see how he feels at 20 yeah about the same about the same there's just more power we got out of our desired line yeah, it is more powerful. And that is not analogized through SE to Pro because the Pro is more powerful and has more low end granularity. Uh, there, it's like, it's like we're, this is hybrid theory. I personally prefer the dance the all in Jora is doing. We've still got quite a bit of low end control. It's just, oh man, the percentage difference in power has been established. There's more power coming out of the, the, the Injora to the tune of, I mean, I know we're doing five clicks of throttle. I don't think that is directly a linear translation. It feels to me 15 to 20% more powerful. Oh no, that is, linearly. I'm thinking 20 out of 100 versus 25 out of 100. No, it's 20 versus 25. That's 5 of 20 is 4th of 25. 5 of 20. So it's 20% more powerful? Yeah, absolutely. I feel that absolutely. The low end, you've got to really be in a situation for that, the, the real low low, but we can go I mean, for that real low low to be, you know, usable or required. Basically, what I'm trying to get to is the G2 has a bunch of features that we don't use or, or I don't use. Real reverse and the ability to disable your drag brake. I know that the, the ability to disable your drag brake is handy to people that like trail, but we, we are not trailing. We are pure rock a carahal in here. So I don't need to real reverse. I can't do my brain can't operate it. So I'm looking at it, not on bonus features, but purely on capability. Is it worth the extra? What are we looking at? 13, $14, almost very nearly 50% more money for a 1080 G2 versus a Injora 140. I don't know if it is. Based on other factors, I don't think that the 1080 has been unseated as the benchmark. I think that the G2 took, oh, just slid right in where the G1 was previously and took over as the benchmark. Because even if you're not using the added stuff, which I'm not, thankfully, bless them over at Hobbywing for not nerfing the speed control, for not doing something to, in, in such a way that the G2 was a completely different animal. 
than the G1. I think there's only one thing left to do. There's only two things left to do. Turn brake. Yeah, look at that. The little, that's mechanical take up. That's basically the slack in the system. Every time a gear meshes with another gear, a little bit of slack. Uh, particularly then you get drive shafts, slack in the drive shafts. All that slack accumulates and you go, yep. So let's put this guy right about here. I mean, I can see how someone would appreciate that level of smoothness. I would personally take the extra power that is afforded by this guy. There's smoothness exhibited. Come on, get in the right spot. It's a little bit better. It's a, li it's a little tiny bit better. Mon one might go so far as to say 20% better. Uh, yeah, it's more power. If, and okay, we have, okay. We've checked drag brake. Drag brake looking, looking pretty good. Let's just, it, it's, it's a two minute thing, less, it's under a minute really, to pull out a G2 and put in a G1. I grabbed the wrong radio again. I need to, would it be insane? Would it be insane to uh, send my RC4 housings out to get them hydro dipped? to get a red one and a blue one because maybe just crawl on fusion them. I don't know, something I need to be able to tell them apart. And now we need to do it again. Going for the shuttle side, opposite side here. Yeah, if your finger is involved, I think I think I can, well, he can just scoot a little. He can scoot. One hand him over. A little scoot. Well, now, now we're doing a test within a test. I'm trying to test something else. Come on, come on, don't. Okay, just, just stay right there then. Okay. Yeah, the speed under cruise control feels exactly the same. I feel like the G2 is so smooth at the low end and the FOC, it's like they turn the FOC up. The, what is it, field oriented control? That it's desire to r maintain RPM it almost feels less powerful on the rock, the G2 versus the G1, in these fleeting moments. The drag brake on the G1 feels a lot closer to the drag brake on the Enjora 140. They, it's almost like, oh, can you even imagine this, kids? It's almost like they're three different speed controls. Um, the G2 1080 is the smoothest, no, no argument. The G1 is, in my opinion, having just done boom, bam, bim, bam, the G1 is still the benchmark. If you've never owned a G1 and you only drive a G2, you, you would never know, obviously. No, that's a very obvious statement, but... I stand by what I said many, 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 many moons ago when I believe I used Old Blue, the Marlin Edition RC four-wheel drive Trailfinder 2 to test a 1080 and a 1080 G2 back-to-back. -back. I think that's what happened in that episode. I would see no point in running out and replacing a G1 you already own with a G2. Unless you really need the ability, the extra doodads. Unless you really need, apparently there's a str stronger BEC too, I think. Uh, if you're running, air quotes, normal servos, you'll never know.
You'll never know. I never felt any steering differential on these cheap Amazon blue cases on the G1 versus the G2. They feel exactly the same. Um, the G1 feels closer to the Enjora, but of the three, and this is my first opportunity to truly get this science the testing one after the other with immediacy i i prefer the enjora over the other two and in order i would put the 1080 g2 last it's the one i like the least because i feel like in order to accurately or adequately exploit that amount of smoothness the smoothness afforded only by the g2 you need a motor that costs more than you want to go out and pay for it well maybe maybe that's all speculation that's speculation and not science because that's what we're going to do last next time this is the last of this. It took me about 25 minutes. Did I say it took me 25 minutes to change out those two motors? Eh, because it did. About 12 minutes each. You have to complete OD3s, man. You got to take the whole gearbox out of the vehicle. Drive shafts fall apart because they hate us. Uh, you know, you have to climb. You got to go through hurdles while climbing hills uh, to swap a motor on an OD3. Once it's in service, it's a fantastic gearbox. I do not mind it at all. But ugh, changing motors and getting your pinion gear mesh set is not is not an enjoyable experience. I would take the Enjora first of the three. Price notwithstanding. Then I would take the G1, and then I would take the G2. I own two G2s, and... I, I don't I don't see a point in getting another one because I mean these guys are going to be probably forever brushed and because they are twins they will be outfitted with most likely G1 uh, uh, 1080s until such time as the Enjora is available and then they will both be running the Enjoras because I just I just prefer it I just I just prefer it. It's a personal preference, and and we may indeed have found it. Because inside our boy Zamot, right there, the blue boy down at the bottom, is a $14 motor and a $30 speed control. It's $44. It absolutely does the things. It has a surplus of power. It is smooth enough and more powerful compared to the 1080 to a degree that would I replace a 1080 G1 with an Enjora? I think I just said that I will. Not would, but will. Once the Enjora 140 is available, there will be one in Zaymont and one in Tomax. And they will be, they will be the speed controls upon which other things are tested. It will be my benchmark it's strong man i will i will sacrifice some smoothness for this auto crawl point it shoot it so yeah it is out there i think I think there is a very valid and viable option under 50 bucks. The science is not done. The science will and shall continue. But we've got a bunch of 35s that we need to test. We've got motors outside of that. If anybody has a further later on, if anybody has a request of a brushed motor that they would like to see potentially up against another brushed motor, we'll be able to do that. That's that's what the that's what twins are for. So, the question mark that now hangs heavy over my what are you doing? Oh, it's just it's just rude. Uh, if you remember, Tomax the red is older he's the older of the twins and this is what this is what they do all day 
So, uh, will these have stealth X's in them, uh, which means that swapping a motor takes two minutes <laughs> rather than 12 minutes? Um, it's very, very probable. We won't change the skids. I'll build new Delrin adapters so that we can move the motor forward. We can move the gearbox around. It will allow us to test other things, moving the motor forward versus moving the motor backward. Uh, it will allow us to run the thing in reverse versus forward. There will be another test here upcoming. Um, I don't know at what point. Now we're just talking about the future. Uh, the OD3, which is the gearbox fitted to both of these gentlemen, has two outputs on the rear. The underdrive output and then the just straight output. So with this with the mere change of one drive shaft segment, I can outfit one of these gentlemen at 18% underdrive and the other one at zero. And we can see what zero zero looks like versus 18%. So that'll be interesting. Many things to test. I don't know if I want to spend 12 minutes per motor change to test a bucket full of motors. So we might stealth these guys, and by keeping the skid, I can just set the OD3s aside, and we can hot swap a gearbox in there in about 12 minutes. So that's, this, that's the point of these guys, and that is how they will forever live. It is through their versatility and their ability to side-by-side -side test things one after the other. No, I'm with you, I'm so, I support this. Zaymon, he, he called that out. He brought that on himself. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. This, this is the kind of thing, this was the absolute alpha nerd level minutia that we love here. We love to test down to the in, to the, to the, the minutiae. The, there's another word like minutiae that I want to use, but it's gone. The sun got in my eyes and erased the whiteboard of my brain. So, I will instead take that moment to thank you all so much for uh, hanging out for uh, science canyon style with a big old pseudo in front of it. It's kind of like science. It looks a little bit like science. And if we have no other takeaways, it's that please enjoy a hurry up and release the 140 ESC because the 140 ESC plus a $14 enjoy motor, it Good enough, not just good enough, very good enough. Good enough that I would say there are some rigs that you don't want to put a $150 power plant in it. You want to put a $15 Ally Express servo and a $14 Amazon motor and a $30 Amazon uh, Endura ESC and all in investment, 60 bucks in electronics inside the rig and not have it be gross compromises. Have it do the things and make you not feel bad about your life choices. Sometimes we like to be reinforced in our life choices. So hopefully this will have reinforced some of us in our life choices. And this is why they can't be left alone. Brothers, brothers be brothers. Thank you again, everybody. The Middle Midwest Goodbye has drawn to a conclusion. We'll see you in the next one. Comment below if you have any early suggestions. I, I will ask you again because I read the comment. And if I don't move it over to long-term storage, it is as never was. So we're going to get more testing shenanigans going on in the future. Thank you so much for watching these testing shenanigans. Tune in for whatever comes next. In between now and then, please do one and I'll do your very best to have a good one, everybody. We'll see you next time here from the canyon. A bug bit me on the elbow, and I'm really fixating on it. We'll see you next time. A good time was had by, I hope at least most.